it feels like you can't really turn anywhere without hearing about AI, right? Yeah. And it's definitely moving beyond just, you know, cool tech demos. Absolutely. It's starting to genuinely change how things get done, especially in software development. Exactly. And that's what we're diving into today, specifically generative AI within the AWP app cloud. It's becoming... Well, a pretty big deal there. It really is. We've got some great source material outlining how generative AI is being um, woven into ob app development. Yeah. So the plan today is to really unpack that, look at the tools, the tech, what's actually happening. Right. And the sources really highlight two main streams, don't they? First, there's using AI to help with the day-to-day -day app coding, making developers quicker, maybe cutting. And second, it's about building generative AI into the custom business apps you create with ob app. Yeah. Embedding those capabilities directly. So think of this as your shortcut, your guide to getting your head around this evolving ob app landscape. You're the kind of person who wants to stay ahead, especially, you know, when it comes to your career. Absolutely. And the resource we've kind of got our eye on is Zquant's AI's mm -hmm. SAP AI Masterclass mm -hmm. over on Udemy. Now, this isn't some huge, lengthy academic thing. It's designed with a very specific promise. And it's quite a compelling one, especially if you're busy, right? Learn SAP AI in just one week. That's the hook. Right. By dedicating maybe 30 minutes each day. Yeah and focusing on practical, hands-on exercise. Because things are moving fast. They really are. And if we zoom out a bit, thinking about your career path, having as a solid grasp of how AI works within SAP, that could seriously set you apart. Definitely. It's about gaining a skill set that's going to be more and more in demand. No question. So for you listening, this SAP AI Masterclass by Zequence.ai on Udemy. Yeah. It's positioning itself as a structured, manageable way to get relevant AI knowledge, specifically for the SAP world. Okay, so let's start with that first one, AI supporting the actual coding process. A key piece here seems to be something called Joule for developers. Joule, right. It's positioned as this AI tool set that plugs right into the Eclipse development environment, which uh, many ABAP developers use. Exactly, into the ABAP development tools or ADT within Eclipse. And its job is what? To make complex ABAP stuff easier to understand, and it has a chat feature. Pretty much. Simplifying understanding those potentially complex development objects, yes, and providing that chat interface for, you know, asking questions in natural language. Okay, but how is that different from just, like, searching the help docs? What's the AI doing? That's the crucial bit. Joule isn't just a search bar. It has specific AI-driven features, mm -hmm. like predictive code completion. Ah, okay. So suggesting code. More than suggesting, it generates ABAP code snippets right there in the editor as you're typing. Yeah, and these suggestions, they're machine-generated. They're trained on a massive amount of internal SAP ABAP code. Importantly, the sources say IP and personal data are filtered out. Got it. So it's learned from real ABAP code, but safely. That sounds mm -hmm. potentially very useful for getting code down faster. It could really accelerate things. Then there's the Joule chat feature itself. You can ask general ABAP questions, sure, but also specifics about the code or objects you have open right then. Context aware, then. Exactly. And you can even ask it to generate code examples for you. It seems quite versatile, organized around different topics and skills. Okay. And what else? There was an explain feature mentioned. Yes, explain. This gives you natural language explanations of development objects or even selected lines of code. It specifically mentions helping with ABAP classes, your object-oriented building blocks, and also CDS artifacts. The CDS core data services, right? Defining data models. That's the one. So if you encounter some unfamiliar ABAP class or a complex CDS view, Joule can supposedly help you understand what it's doing in plain English. That could be huge for onboarding or tackling legacy code. Um, and it didn't stop there, did it? Something about testing. Right. ABAP unit support, helping create and improve unit tests more effectively. And related to that, CDS test generation, specifically creating test classes for those CDS entities. It really sounds like they're trying to weave AI assistance through quite a bit of the ABAP workflow. It seems that way. Yeah. And getting started sounds pretty straightforward. Access via menus or a specific jewel view in Eclipse. And that predictive code completion, it's apparently on by default. 
Interesting. That suggests they see it as a core part of the experience now, not just an add-on. You mentioned context awareness for the chat and explained features. How deep does that go? Well, the, the idea is it uses information from the project you have open. So if you ask about a specific class you're editing, it knows which class and can give a much more relevant answer or explanation than if it had no context. Makes sense. And you can apparently refine the answers too, ask follow-up questions, tweak the prompts. But um, it's worth noting, the sources mention the underlying AI models change over time. So the same question might give a slightly different answer later on. A good reminder, it's dynamic, not static. Okay, so that paints a picture of the developer assistance side. Let's shift to that second major use case, putting Gen AI inside custom ABAP applications. This feels like where really new things could happen. Agreed. And the core technology enabling this, according to the material, is the ABAP AI SDK. SDK meaning Software Development Kit. And it's powered by something called Intelligent Scenario Lifecycle Management, or ISLM. Okay, unpack that. ABAP AI SDK. Is it like a library developers use? Essentially, yes. It's an ABAP reuse library. It lets your ABAP code talk to large language models, LLMs, hosted over on the Generative AI Hub which is part of SAP AI Core. So it's the bridge, connecting your ABAP app to these big AI brains in the cloud. Precisely. The goal is enabling developers to build their own custom features, powered by generative AI, directly into the ABAP business applications they're creating. Which could mean, I don't know, apps that summarize reports automatically or generate draft emails or understand user requests in natural language. Exactly those kinds of things. The SDK aims to standardize how you access these LLMs and provide helpful features. And that ISLM piece, Intelligent Scenario Lifecycle Management, its role is about managing these connections and the whole lifecycle. Managing the AI scenarios. Yeah, it helps with enabling the Gen AI scenarios and managing the connectivity. The intelligent scenarios and models themselves become transportable objects in ABAP. Think of it like packaging up the AI configuration so you can move it between systems development, test, production. Ah, okay. That's important for enterprise software. So yeah. the SDK talks to SAP AI Core and the Gen AI Hub. Does it just work or is there setup involved? There's definitely some initial setup. A system administrator needs to configure the connection between the AVAP system and the generative AI Hub. There's a specific communication scenario mentioned SAPO 0AG69. Right. It involves things like subscribing to SAP AI Core, setting up service instances and keys for security, and then defining the communication arrangements in the ABAP system itself, basically laying the groundwork. So admin sets up the pipes, then the developer can use the SDK. That seems to be the flow. Developers then create the intelligent scenarios and models they need within the ABAP development tools. Okay, that division of labor makes sense. So what can developers actually do with this SDK? What are the API features like? Well, the main one is probably the completion API. That's for sending a prompt to an LLM and getting generated text back. Standard Gen AI stuff? Pretty much. You can instantiate it, control parameters like temperature, you know, creativity versus predictability, and set limits on the output length using max tokens. And there are different ways to send the prompt, either as a simple string or as a structured list of messages. Message lists, how does that work? It lets you define roles, like system for initial instructions, user for the actual query, and assistant for previous AI replies. It helps maintain context in a conversation or set a specific persona for the AI within your app. Interesting. So you can guide the interaction more finely. What else? There's function calling. This mm. is pretty powerful. It lets the LLM interact with external tools or systems that you define. How so? You describe available functions to the LLM, say, a function to look up current stock levels or one to create a sales order in the ABAP system. You tell the LLM the function's name, what it does, what parameters it needs. Okay. Then when a user asks something, the LLM can decide if it needs to call one of your functions to get necessary information or perform an action before it generates its final response to the user. Wow. Okay. So the AI isn't just generating text in isolation. It can actively query data or trigger processes within the ABAP system itself based on the conversation. That's the idea. Hmm. It grounds the AI in your actual business context and data. That opens up a lot of possibilities. Anything else in the SDK? There's also a prompt library API. This lets you use predefined prompt templates that are managed centrally via ISLM. Good for consistency and reusing effective prompts. Right, standardizing interactions. And finally, tracing capabilities. These hook into the standard ABAP cross-trace tools to help you debug if things go wrong with the SDK calls. 
Okay, so a fairly comprehensive toolkit for embedding Gen AI. But uh, these things aren't perfect, right? The sources must mention caveats. Oh, absolutely. A big one is the non-deterministic nature. Same prompt, slightly different output sometimes. Yeah. And the potential for, well, hallucinations, the AI making things up or giving incorrect information. Yeah, we hear about that a lot. So the guidance is crystal clear. Any code or significant content generated by AI must be reviewed by a human developer. You need to check it for correctness, for security, for everything. No blind trust. Makes complete sense. Human oversight is key. What else? Just the reminder that the underlying LLMs themselves can change. Models get updated, sometimes deprecated. So applications built using them might need maintenance or adaptation over time as the AI tech evolves. Right. It's not a build once and forget it kind of thing. Good points. Now, you mentioned testing support in Joule earlier. Let's circle back to that ABAP unit and CDS tests. How exactly is AI helping there? So for ABAP unit, Joule aims to help across the testing cycle. We mentioned test generation creating initial unit tests for public methods in global ABAP classes. You can trigger this from various places in Eclipse. And the advice is start small, review carefully. Yes, understand the code you're testing, focus the scope, and always meticulously review the generated tests. Don't just assume they're right. What about making tests better, more robust? That's where dependency analysis comes in. It helps find those tricky dependencies, maybe calls to external systems or complex database interactions that make tests fragile. Things that make tests fail randomly. Exactly. And once identified, there's test double support to help you replace those real dependencies with controlled fakes or test doubles, making your tests more stable and isolated. That's a classic unit testing challenge addressed with AI help. Nice. There's also test code explanations helping you understand existing tests, maybe spot test smells or patterns, and AI-powered refactoring. Refactoring tests? How? You can give Joule instructions in natural language, like use inline declarations or avoid Hungarian notation or extract method, and it will try to refactor the test code accordingly to improve its quality or style. So you can guide the AI to clean up the tests? Seems so. And it also helps with splitting large test classes or methods to improve structure and maintainability. Quite a range of assistance for unit testing and for CDS testing. Similar goals. CDS test generation focuses on creating automated tests for those ABAP CDS entities. Again, aiming for better test coverage and saving developer time. It uses the CDS test double framework, conceptually similar to the unit test doubles, to isolate the CDS logic being tested. And you generate these tests within Eclipse, too. Yes, using the CDS test class generator integrated into the development tools. Okay, so AI assistance is popping up for testing both traditional ABAP code and the newer CDS models. Feels like we've covered a lot of ground here. We have. We've seen Joule for developers aiming to be that AI coding companion for daily ABAP tasks, completion, chat, exhalation, testing support. Boosting efficiency, helping understand code. Right. And then the ABAP AI SDK, powered by ISLM, as the toolkit for actually building Gen AI features into your custom ABAP applications, connecting to LLMs via SAP AI Core. Which opens the door to more innovative, intelligent business applications built on ABAP. Definitely potential for significant productivity gains for developers and, yeah, new kinds of application functionality. But always with that caveat we discussed, these AI tools are powerful assists, not replacements for human understanding and rigorous review. Absolutely crucial. The non-determinism, the potential for errors, human oversight remains paramount. So wrapping this up, maybe a final thought for you, the listener, to ponder... How is this deep integration of generative AI likely to fundamentally change the day-to-day -day reality for ABAP developers and what truly new kinds of business solutions might emerge from ABAP Cloud in the coming years because of it? It's definitely something to watch. The landscape is changing fast. It really is. Yeah. Fascinating area to keep exploring. 